welcome to livealittlehigher.com. We continue learning Hovos Halevavot, Tutis of the Heart, and we're in the gate of self-accounting, chapter three. <clears throat> and today, Rabbi Bahia Ibn Pakuda is telling, one, is telling us, one should make a personal accounting of his capacity for re religious action. He should practice such action, persist in it, and be eager and diligent in performing it until it becomes a part of him. We're in the month of Elul. This is a month of connection to God, of, of being, going back to who we really are. This is Teshuvah. Teshuvah doesn't mean that we change. Teshuvah means that we return, that we go to who we really are, which, which is our godly neshama. So what he's saying here is that we have to be persistent in trying to learn Torah, we have to be persistent in prayer, we have to be persistent in, in doing mitzvot, because at the end of the day, this is, we're gonna have to give this accounting to Hashem. And he says that although at the beginning it should, it should seem hard for us, it should be, it feels awkward for us, at the end, once we persist, it's gonna become part of you. It's gonna be your nature. So then he should try to increase his capacity yearning for this in his heart and rising to it in his thought and with a sincere heart and genuine inwardness ask God to, for help and to strengthen him to exceed his capacity for knowledge and action. Yes, we need Hashem's help. We cannot do it alone. I'm a Balshuva. I've been keeping Torah and mitzvot for the last 20, I don't know, 22 years of my life. And uh, it was overwhelming. I'm not gonna say it's not to change, to, to connect, to, to change all your life. Uh, we used to eat in a certain way, then suddenly we couldn't eat half of the things we ate. The kitchen was, uh, I didn't even think about it. Now I have to think about it. What is milk? What is, what is uh, meat? Uh, where do I wash this? Where do I wash this? Can I eat this? Does this have a, a, a hesher? Does it have the, the stamp that it's kosher? Yeah, and at the beginning it was very unnatural and very strange. It felt like it was not you. But today it's me, that's who I am. So when we persist in this, God will grant us his request open for him the gates of knowledge of him and strengthen his mind and limbs so that he is able to fulfill those of his commandments that are beyond his capability, level after level, as it says, I am Hashem, your God, who instructs you, instructs you for your own benefit, who guides you in the way you should go. This is Yeshayahu. And in, the, in truth, yes, when you decide, yes, I'm gonna dress more modestly, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna change the way I dress, suddenly Hashem is so kind that the fashion becomes all these long dresses, covered with the sleeves, and everywhere you go, uh, you decide to become kosher. Suddenly there were two restaurants in, in the whole place, suddenly there's hundreds of restaurants, uh, supermarkets, he opens the way for you. So as it says, in the way you wanna go, Hashem will help you. So an analogy to this may be drawn from the crafts and the mathematical sciences. A person who is a novice in one of the crafts can at first ex execute only specific parts of it. Like, remember the first time you went to an algebra class, like you couldn't understand anything. It was like Chinese for you. But at the end of the year, you were able to, to do all these, uh, all, these, uh, um, all these examples of the algebra, all these uh, tests on algebra, you were able to, to do them. So the same is true of, of the sciences, of geometry, of anything that you learn. At the beginning, it's very strange. You don't understand anything, but eventually you can even teach it. And so we see that, um, that the main purpose of the precepts we perform with our bodies and limbs is to spur us to the precepts we fulfill in our hearts and in our lives, for they are the pillar of worship and the foundation of the Torah. As it is written, being of God, your God of Hashem your God, worship only Him. It is a thing very close to you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you can do it. 
It's not something, Hashem is not asking from us things that we cannot do. When he asks a Jew, keep Shabbat, keep kosher, dress sneers, give generously, be kind to other people. He's not asking us to be something we're not. He is asking us to be who we really are. It's not far away from us. And what does Hashem, go, your God, ask of you? Only that you fear Hashem, your God. But since this inner service is beyond the ordinary power of a human being, it is unattainable to him unless he detaches himself from his many animalistic desires, controls his instincts and restrains his motions. The creator, may he be exalted, has bound him to serve with his body and limbs according to his ability so that it becomes easier for him to fulfill them. So yes, one of the things that a Balshuba does, a person that returns to God, a person that returns to his essence, is that he has to get rid of his ego. He has to nullify himself to a certain point and to say, yes, I, I want to do Hashem's will. I'm not going to do my will. I'm going to do his will. Ah, that I would like to eat uh, a cheese sandwich, uh, a ham and cheese sandwich. Maybe, yes, it was delicious. But you know what? Hashem doesn't want me to eat that. He doesn't want me to eat that. And what I want is to do what Hashem wants. So I choose to want Hashem. I choose to want to follow Him. This is our behira. This is our free choice. This is who we really are because we have free choice. We're the only creation in the world that can choose freely if he wants to serve God or he doesn't want to serve God. The rest of creation has no, no other alternative. They are doing what Hashem is making them do. So, and when the believer works at them in his heart, and in most being and attains of them what he can, God opens for him the gate of spiritual virtues, and he realizes of, and he realizes of them what had been unattainable to him, and he serves the Creator, may he be exalted, with his body, his soul, outwardly and inwardly. And as David, peace be upon him, said, King David, my heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. And so, so this has been compared to a man who plants trees and then weeds around them. He clears the soil of the thorns and weeds, waters the saplings when this is needed and acts fertilizer. And he then waits to receive the fruit. You know, if you want a garden, you have to garden it. You cannot expect to have beautiful roses and beautiful fruit trees and beautiful flowers in your garden if you're not working the garden. And this is Hashem's garden. The world is God's garden. This was the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He used to say the world is Hashem's garden and we are his gardeners and we're going to get what we plant. If we don't fertilize and we don't take care of it and we don't take out the weeds and we don't cut the grass and we don't prune the trees and prune the flowers, we're going to get weeds all over, thorns all over, and we're not going to have a beautiful garden. So the same is true of one who undertakes God's service. If he exerts himself, has and, and is diligent to do all that is in his power, God will help him achieve what is beyond his power. You know, you want to follow God, Hashem is going to give you all that you need to be able to follow God. You want to do against Hashem, He's going to give you everything you're going to need to go against Hashem. So He'll take you the way you want to go. So whoever fulfills the Torah in the midst of poverty will in the end fulfill in the midst of riches. This is Perkiavot. And as the wise one said, King Solomon in Kohelet, to a person who finds favor before him, he gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. So our sages of blessed memory said, study leads to performance, performance leads to carefulness, carefulness leads to diligence, diligence leads to abstinence, abstinence leads to innocence, innocence leads to purity, purity leads to pity. And pity is the greatest of them all, as it says. And, and as it says, and this is the healing. Of all you spoke to your pious ones in, in, in a vision. But if he neglects to do what is within his ability and takes lightly what is in his power to accomplish, God's help and support will be kept far from him. 
as it says, God is far from the wicked. Your sins have been, become barriers between you and God. This is in Yeshiyahu. So yes, my friends, we're coming close to Rosh Hashanah, to Yom Kippur. We're in the month of Elul. It's a month of accounting, of self-accounting. Think for one second, where would you want to be next year? What do you want to achieve this year? Is God important to you? Do you find that you being in this world is part of his plan? Ask yourself these questions. And if yes, then okay, if I'm here because he desires me to be in this world, he created me, I'm here for a purpose, I have a purpose, then start working on that. Little by little, you don't have to overwhelm yourself. Take one thing, take one thing, one thing that has to do with your relationship with God, one thing that has to do with your relationship with others, and one thing that has to do with your relationship with yourself. And in that way, you're gonna be working on this through the year. Next year, you're gonna see how much you have achieved, how much you've been able to do. And with God's help, you're gonna see it. So I wish you a blessed week, and remember, live a little higher. Thank you.